What is up, you beautiful people? It's time for another This Week in Stacks episode. Some of the topics this week include Alex Go scoring a big round of funding, a bunch of CityCoins news, Muneeb and Patrick on big cable news networks, the new Stacks resident program announces its first cohort, and some Megapont news. If you're new here, I'm your host, Jake. You'll see me around as Jake Blockchain. And this is the Built on Bitcoin podcast where we're showcasing the apps and founders building on stacks, which is secured by Bitcoin. So let's get into it. This week we have, first off, Alex Go. Alex is a DeFi protocol building a full suite of products on stacks. And they just secured a huge round of funding in the amount of $5.8 million dollars. The round was led by White Star Capital with participation from venture firms Culture, GBIC, and OK Blockchain Capital. Uh, I'm not familiar with most of those names, but this is big. This is big as they'll be able to execute much faster and bring on more team members. She had an interview, Chiante did, the founder with decrypt and she said she said this at the moment there's approximately 200 billion locked in DeFi protocols nearly all of this is on ethereum the market cap of bitcoin is over 1 trillion and bitcoin is the original and most secure blockchain network in human history and i read that and it just perfectly described the blue ocean that they are tapping into cuz everything in the DeFi space right now is on ethereum and using altcoins or wrapped assets, all of the native Bitcoin lending is happening through a few small exchanges like Coinbase or BlockFi. And Alex is in this perfect position to dominate if they can figure out how to make native BTC productive, which has been a focus for some of the leaders in the community lately. So, I mean, a year from now, who knows what's going on? So pretty exciting times. Uh, and they are launching next month. I think I heard it's on the 10th. They just entered phase two on their test net. Uh, you can go play with it now at app.alexgo.io. Yeah, super, super dope. So that's exciting. And some other big news around Bitcoin yields is coming from Miami. You probably saw this where the city of Miami voted to accept the city coins wallet contributions. And they spoke about spending the money on the homeless issue when the uh, the city first passed the accepting the treasury. They were going to spend it on the homeless issue because I, I thought it was great. But they have since changed their mind and now they will be stacking the stacks and getting the Bitcoin yield from that and distributing that money to residents who create a wallet, which... At first, I was like, okay, that's dope. You know, people will get, you know, uh, a couple bucks in Bitcoin. But it's actually genius the more I think about it because it's the perfect way to onboard people into crypto in a real hands-on way. Because most people, if they're skeptical, they're not going to take their hard-earned money, especially if they live in paycheck to paycheck, and put it onto an exchange, especially if it's not Coinbase, where, you know, you have to figure out how this thing works, go onto the browser, download an extension, understand what a secret passcode phrase is, all these things, no one's doing that. So, but if there's free Bitcoin waiting for you and you've been kind of curious and it's just free and you can do it on your phone on a mobile app, uh, I think it's going to be huge. And it just kind of like wets the whistle to get people peaked of interest. So, yeah, I think it's, I think it's super smart. And uh, yeah, in other City Coins news, New York Coin has been going absolutely bananas. Uh, mining activated on the 11th of November, and the first mining block started the next day, early on the 11th. And in the first eight days of mining, the wallet currently holds $9.3 million worth of stacks which is insane. Over a million a day being sent to the wallet for the city of New York. 
Uh, and some of the stats I saw as I was looking through the week, there was as many as 100 miners at one time at its peak, which I don't think we ever saw that from Miami Coin. And I think there's been upwards of 600 unique wallets have sent in bids, which is a, a good sign. And we've also seen roughly 5,000 stacks committed per block. So that's $10,000 roughly going to the city every 10 minutes. Uh, yeah, I've said this before, and I'm just going to say it until I'm winded, which I'm already getting there. But City Coins is a game changer. It's just, it's it's still super early. Like, stacks, when I joined six months ago, all you could really do was stack. Like, there's a couple apps around the ecosystem, but nothing really productive to do with it. You just stacked it, and you got your little bit of Bitcoin. But now we have Arcadico, we got NFT marketplaces for days, there's more collections that we know what to spend our stacks on, and Citicoins is the exact same way. It's right now just a way to either sell it or stack it, but this is only Citicoins in its first form. It's going to evolve. This is a programmable token, so outside of the financial incentives, it can do so much more, and uh, yeah, we're going to see that over time. So, super dope. But speaking of city coins and uh, leaders in the sex ecosystem, Patrick and Munib have been getting more and more recognition from mainstream media outlets lately. Munib had an interview this past week with Yahoo Finance, and Patrick had a segment on Fox News, which, just to plant this seed, don't call me crazy, even though it sounds crazy coming out of my lips, but I think Fox News is going to like take a turn culturally and become more popular as crypto grows. And the reason I say that is because although Fox News kind of gets painted as like this right-wing channel and it's a bunch of BS and it is largely that, uh, the underlying things that they're for is self-sufficiency, smaller government, and fiscal responsibility, which are all crypto values as well. And some of the more well-written articles I've seen on crypto from the mainstream media have come from Fox. So I think we're going to see them, if they jump on board on crypto, and crypto supports the fact that they're being supported by them, uh, we could see a sea change in how Fox is kind of like viewed in the broader context. It's early, um, and I could be wrong, but I'm just going to plant that seed because I might be able to say I told you so. Anyways, other news. Keep it going, keep it going. Gina and the Hero team put out two new Stacker Chat videos. One was with two of the female co-founders of Layer, uh, Alva Koretsky and Marina Ramoshko. They deep dive into what Layer is about, their mission to bring women into tech, how to cleverly onboard people into crypto, using NFTs. Uh, I think the video is worth watching just for that because it's pretty freaking clever what I'll uh, suggest. And uh, yeah, they talk about how NFTs can really be a way for artists to sustain themselves in this new business model. So yeah, super dope. The other video is Munib talking about the launch of New York Coin. And he goes into some of how Stacks Mining works how profitable it is, some of the topics around that. So, yeah, if you want to deep dive on those topics, highly recommend. Almost done. Two more things left. Megapont, which is the NFT collection launched on Stacks that has just came out of nowhere, and they hit another big milestone. They crossed $2 million in secondary sales, which I believe is the highest-growing NFT in volume by far, and uh, yeah, it's pretty badass to see it grow. People really love these apes, and uh, yeah, it's it's something that I'm still trying to wrap my head around. How do communities kind of like build from the ground up around these pictures, and how do they keep the floor price up, the price discovery? Like, all there's so many layers to it. It's super interesting, 
I, I definitely want to have Mark, which is one of the core guys at Megapont, on the podcast in the future. Uh, okay, last but not least, the Stacks Foundation announced their first cohort of the Residence Program. And the Residence Program is this new initiative that they've launched where they help certain creators bring things to life by giving them a steady flow of funding. So you can not worry about bills and money, and it gives you some of that latitude to build certain things that you want to and bring it to life. So the first cohort had five groups accepted, and uh, I'll just cover them briefly, but each of these could be a deep dive. So first one is Jonathan Hammond, and he's been brought on as a technical documentation lead, and his job will be to better organize and separate the docs that are scattered around the ecosystem, as well as working on a system to make it more Wikipedia style, where the community can update the docs as needed. Second is Dan Trevino, and I'm going to mess this name up, but Amr Elgobari, which you know as the Boom Team. And as far as I know from the press release, they'll be continuing work on Boom. So happy for us. Third, uh, Thomas Osmundson and Jasper Jans. They'll be working on updating stacking.club, which if you haven't been to, it's kind of an all-encompassing site to give you different stats on stacking. And uh, they're going to try and spend that time making stacking.club into the place for stackers to get information about past cycles, current cycles, etc., Uh, Fourth is Drew Falkman and David Collier, and they are researching and building a platform for managing token communities. The idea is structured around using a Discord plugin to handle all the important tasks around managing an NFT community, things like reputation, rewards, airdrops, voting mechanisms, and governance, like Anything you might need to, uh, you know, make things run smoothly in a cohesive package, they're trying to do that with this plugin for Discord, and eventually in a broader context, is my understanding. Uh, and last one is Mohammed, who you might see around as Haas, uh, Harold, Ryder, and Juliet. They are researching and building out tools for governance around the Stacks ecosystem. So with everything so decentralized, it's there's no real bosses. So it's hard and can get messy at times when something goes awry and you don't know how to fix it, how do we vote on this, you know, all these different mechanisms and how do we come together as a unit and be cohesive but also be fair. Uh, they're kind of at the bleeding edge of trying to figure out how do you build a system that you know allows governance without having its re-centralized power. So, yeah, super interesting ideas. Uh, lots of good stuff being built. Super awesome teams. Uh, yeah, and that's it. I am winded as usual because talking for like 10 straight minutes is a lot. But, yeah, that's it for this week. Uh, tomorrow... So this is launching on a Thursday on the 18th. Tomorrow I have my podcast with Grace, who is a venture partner at the Stacks Accelerator and also the artist behind Crash Punks. She's on the podcast. We talk about a bunch of stuff. And yeah, that's it for now. I love y'all. I'll see y'all in the next episode. And peace. Welcome to Built on Bitcoin. I know that things don't always go your way, but I'll be right here waiting. I've been waiting now. I've been trying to figure out a way to make it out. Make it out, cause I don't know.